So let's talk about the uh, various uh, options you have for vacuum pumps. The vacuum is really the heart of your vacuum chucking system. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, in addition to using a vacuum pump, you can use a vacuum generator that's connected to your compressor. Um, so, but I'm going to talk about the various types of vacuum pumps um, that you can use and the advantages and disadvantages for each. So the first one is uh, these small pumps that you typically see um, used for HVAC applications. Um, this is the pump that I use for my vacuum stabilization chamber. Um, it's an oil bath pump. It's got an a eccentric cam in there that's embedded with oil. Um, it's only a tenth of a horsepower. It doesn't provide much volume of air, but it provides a very high vacuum. That works great for vacuum stabilization where you're not moving a lot of air, but um, it's not, it doesn't work very well for a vacuum chuck system where you may have to move um, a higher volume of air. Uh, if you're using porous, if, you're, um, any, if your wood is porous or a little bit punky or you don't have a good seal, uh, it's really important with a vacuum chucking system that you be able to move a, a high volume of air while maintaining that vacuum. Whether you get an additional inch of mercury uh, as when you um, to 25 versus 27 inches of mercury when you're pulling your vacuum probably isn't as important in a vacuum chucking system as it is to um, make sure you get enough volume to maintain that. So that's a, that's the simplest one uh, again, but not really uh, applicable for, in, in my opinion, for a vacuum chucking system. Uh, the, the next option that you, you often see, um, this is a, uh, a diaphragm vacuum pump. Um, the advantage is they're, they're relatively quiet, uh, reliable, maintenance free, there's no oil involved. Uh, the, a lot of times you will see them where um, there are two chambers, two diaphragms involved, and that tends to smooth out. Um, the way this works is there's a cam in here that moves a, a, di a rubber diaphragm back and forth, and as it pulls air in and pushes it out, um, uh, it creates the vacuum. Well, if you only have one chamber on a vacuum, on a diaphragm pump, the vacuum tends to pulse a little bit. Not the, the best system if you're trying to uh, hold a strong vacuum on a, um, on, on a piece of work. Um, so often they'll use two chambers on the, on the diaphragm pump and they're out of phase so that tends to reduce some of the pulsing on the system um, and they just get tied together um, when, when you put this on. Uh, certainly a workable system for a vacuum chuck if, you, if it can move enough air. It will not provide, typically it will move volume of air. Um, it doesn't quite move as much, um, it doesn't provide as much a vacuum as some of the um, rotary vane systems which we'll talk about. But that, that certainly is an option, it's an acceptable option um, and, and you can usually find these pumps um, uh, used. The next type of pump, and this is the um, type of pump that I use, is a rotary vane pump. and. Um, You'll notice that when I, I mentioned the Frugal Vacuum Chuck uh, website and supplier, um, they used to carry diaphragm pumps um, in their systems. Uh, and I saw recently they just switched over to the rotary vane pumps. Um, these are what's used in most industrial type applications. And the way these work, I have one here that I will, uh, I'm just going to open up the end of it here for you so you can see. a very simple system as you can see and you can zoom right into this that there are four veins in here that that come out um, and these veins just operate on centrifugal force and as the pump spins the veins come out and are forced out the air comes in on this side it's pulled in um, it's uh, if, if you're compressing an air these can actually use it for compressed air or a vacuum um, it pulls it in and, and again as it changes shape through the system here um, this eccentricity 
will either compress or pull in air in a vacuum. Um, they're very reliable. Again, a lot of medical applications, dentist office, industrial applications that require a continuously running um, pump will often use these rotary vane pumps. Now, they, the, the rotary vane pumps come in two different, two different ways. Um, this particular one is a dry pump and the difference is, and then there's an oil lubricated pump, and the difference is these veins. So in a dry pump, the vein is made of, um, uh, it, it's carbon graphite and it's, it's kind of self-lubricating. Um, in a oil lubricated pump, you'll see that the, um, let's see if we can get these together here. Um, the, the veins are made of a phenolic plastic and that requires oil um, in the pump to lubricate it. Now it's not an oil bath, it's just a, a little bit of oil that comes in that gets brought into the pump and I'll show you one of those pumps here in a second. But the advantage of the oil operated pump is that in an industrial application these carbon veins or the graphite veins eventually wear out and, and do require replacement because there is no lubrication. Um, the, the phenolic um, uh, veins will last longer um, and you get a little bit higher vacuum because you got an oil a film on, on the side of your on the inside of your pump here that creates a little bit better seal than the um, the graphite veins. So um, for a woodworking application using vacuum chucks there's absolutely no reason why you need to go with an oil uh, lubricated pump. It's another thing to take care of. The carbon veins work fine. They give you plenty of vacuum, plenty of air volume and, um, and for the amount of time that most of us will be using this vacuum pump um, they operate just fine um, in our systems, in the system. So, um, if you do go with an oil pump, and, and a lot of times the decision to go with an oil pump versus um, a, a dry pump is just what pump you get. And some of them you can actually switch the veins in there. Um, these are both gas pumps uh, made by gas manufacturing and um, and they some pumps you can switch between uh, wet and dry. Uh, this, the first pump we showed you here, the first rotary vein, is only a dry pump. So uh, sometimes you can switch the vein, sometimes you can't. So if you have an oil, one that requires an oil um, lubrication, if you're using the, uh, the phenolic veins, you need to have, uh, you'll see right here, this is, the, um, this is how it's oiled. There's just a little, the, um, as the air comes into the system, there's a little wick inside this jar there's vacuum oil in here and it just provides a very fine mist inside the pump and uh, and it lubricates it as the air goes in and then um, it, with either one of these pumps with the rotary vein it's actually a good idea to put an exhaust filter on um, so that uh, uh, certainly with the oil and because you will get a little bit of oil mist coming out um, with the carbon veins you do get a little bit of um, just a little bit of graphite coming out of it as well. Uh, it also tends to put, be a bit of a muffler if you put these uh, exhaust filters on. And so in addition to cleaning the air as it comes out, um, it does make the pump run quieter. Um, with either one of these pumps, as, as I mentioned when we talked about um, the first part of this demonstration, um, you want to filter on the inlet side because you can see that if you were to pull sawdust into this pump, if you were to get sawdust down into here and you have these veins running around, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to damage your veins and the pump is it, going to cause it to wear out very quickly. So you want to you filter your inlet air um, so uh, it, it's not a problem. The same thing would happen with the diaphragm pumps. Um, with the HVAC pumps, Probably not as much of a problem because you, those require the maintenance on those is they require you to change the oil um, a little more often. So uh, it's important to put a filter on the inlet side. Uh, this one doesn't have a dust filter before this. There's actually a filter built into the oiler um, on the one I have permanently attached uh, for my lathe. Um, I do have a, a, a second filter in front of this. It's just a paper cartridge filter that filters out dust before it gets to the oiler. Um, 
just a, a quick review of the plumbing that, that we talked about. This is a little bit more visible. So um, this is the vacuum side, the inlet side of the pump. So the, the vacuum comes through this hose, comes up to a gauge. And again, we talked about this is just a bleed valve that you can open and close to release some of the vacuum. And again, depending upon the size of the pump that you're using, um, you may want to reduce the vacuum a little bit, but it's important to have a gauge that you know where you are and then the bleed valve that, um, that allows you to um, adjust it. And then this hose would go down to your quick connect onto your, um, onto your adapter on your lathe. Uh, from a maintenance standpoint, very little maintenance is required for the amount of time that you're using either, any of these pumps, um, except for the HVAC pump. Um, but really, for, for these particular pumps, um, just cleaning out, you know, making sure if you're using the filter on the inlet, making sure you get that cleaned out. Um, the advantage of these pumps is they're very easy to, if you should see a, a degradation of your vacuum, most likely the problem is that you have some, um, there is some debris on the inside that, that you probably should clean out. So just popping six screws off the end, uh, take it apart, you take the, uh, the end of it off, it just comes off with these six bolts. Uh, you take it out, you just clean it, make sure that there's no scoring, um, and you can buy a replacement. If you're, certainly if you're using the, uh, the carbon veins, you can um, replace the carbon veins. They're, they're available for all these pumps. Um, you can replace the veins if you need to, but typically, usually just cleaning out the inside if you should get any dust or anything there. Um, that will, um, that's usually all you need to do. And again, for the, these are meant for high volume, high running time applications. So the amount of time that we're using it in our shops for vacuum chucking um, typically isn't a problem. Um, I, I, I often get asked, how much airflow do I need for a vacuum system? And it's a common, and that's, it's hard to answer that question because it depends on the type of work you do. It also depends on, uh, you have to look at pump curves. There are pumps that will give you hot, very high vacuum, but not very much airflow. And there's other pumps that will give you a lot of airflow, but not very much vacuum. I find that the rotary vane pumps are a good compromise. Um, the, the oiled ones give you a little bit more vacuum, but these are about the same from an air, air volume uh, movement. Um, they, they, they're, they're very reliable and very consistent. I would say, Something in the range of a third horsepower is probably as small as you want to go for a vacuum pump for um, for a, a vacuum chucking application. Less than that, um, that you're probably you may not get the, the volume or the vacuum that you need for this. Um, the other thing to look at is your motors. Um, both these pumps have um, what's called a totally enclosed fan cooled motor. And so that means there's no dust going into the motor. They're, they're, they're fan cooled, but the, the dust doesn't get into the motor with the fan. The, uh, the air goes around the windings of the motor, so you're not getting dust in, in there. So that's, that's something you look for in your motor. And you also might want to look for um, the rating on the motor to see whether it's continuously rated to run continuous. Typically, if you have your, your piece on the, on the vacuum chuck, you're not going to want to turn it off. You don't want your pump overheating on you, so um, just make sure that it's it's a it's a real advantage to have something that's rated for continuous operation. And you'll find that on the nameplate of the motor, it'll it'll say whether it's rated for continuous operation. Uh, pumps, that, motors that are not rated for continuous operation, or that are rated for intermittent operation, it's typically they'll run for about 10 minutes and then they should cool for at least 10 minutes. On a lot of the motors you look at, so again, 10 minutes. Typically, it's going to be enough if you're trying to finish the bottom of a, a, a larger piece or you're using it for a finishing application or some of the things I talked about when, um, uh, with the, um, the acrylic discs and stuff like that. So anyway, that, that's just a, a quick overview on pumps. And uh, next, we're going to look at uh, how we fabricate some vacuum chucks and, and the applications on the lathe. All right, so after we talked about the vacuum pumps, I'd like to, to show you how you can construct your own homemade vacuum chuck. Um, so just talk about the parts you need. You need 
you either need to thread your, uh, you need a block of wood to start with, you either put a faceplate on it or thread it. And um, it's better to start with something you can either leave on here, um, because if you take faceplates on and off, they tend to, uh, it's hard to get them recentered. So it's important that they stay centered. Um, I just screwed a faceplate on here. Um, that'll go on there. Um, I use PVC pipe, and this is four inch. This is for making a four inch um, piece. Now, you can just use a piece of four inch PVC pipe, about six inches long, and do it. But you'll notice on, particularly when you get up into the larger pipe sizes, that it's not solid, rigid PVC. That the inner core of these is almost a foam. So. I'm not comfortable with that, just using that as a, um, as a vacuum chuck, particularly if you're going to use bigger pieces. So what I've done is I've taken a 4-inch coupling and I've cut pieces that fit inside this and I'll put it on both sides and I'll just glue that in with PVC cement and it just gives me a double wall thickness and the coupling itself is, is much stronger. Um, it's, it's solid PVC versus what the pipe is. So uh, we'll go ahead and glue those together. So those pieces, and then and then you finally need a gasket to um, to put on that when you're done. So um, the the process is um, I'm going to first glue. This is C PVC cement. Uh, I'm just going to take this and glue these pieces in to the coupling. Same thing on the other side. Give that just a second to set up there, and so you can see that you got a you have a double wall thickness on here uh, on this. You got the pipe and the coupling. Um, I'm going to take this side isn't quite flush with the front. This side is. Uh, the two surfaces are very flush. I'm going to use this to uh, mate onto my um, to mate onto onto the um, the wooden block here. I've cut the uh, tenon on here. Um, about five eighths of an inch thick, five eighths, three quarters, somewhere in that range, and you want it to fit pretty snugly because you're depending upon that tenon to give this the strength that it needs to function. And you'll see that if all this still fits on here, that that is a a snug fit that goes on there. All right, so so what I'm going to do, actually, just take this off for a moment. I'm going to mix up some five minute epoxy and, and glue that on. Um, typically I'll, I'll use five minute epoxy to, to get an initial glue on there. If I need to, if I find that it's leaking, I'll go ahead and just put a layer of silicone on the inside rim in there. So the epoxy, really the purpose of the epoxy is to just hold this um, on here. So we'll go ahead and get that mixed up. on there and I'm just going to put this back on the lathe here just because I'm going to use the tailstock for a clamp to hold that on because it's important that you get that on square. Right, 
And so, so I'm just using the tailstock to apply some pressure on this to make sure that it's, uh, it's square up against this shoulder here. Um, if you're using smaller PVC, uh, if you're going to do this with 3 inch, um, it's, uh, you, can, you can actually make the, the pipe fit down into it. You can cut a groove instead of just a mortise or a tendon on there. Um, with as, with as big as this is, I just I did not cut a groove in it just to keep the size of the, uh, the, the block down. The other thing that I do on this just to, again, this is a, a piece of four inch PVC. It could have a, a pretty significant um, uh, bowl on there or blank on there. Um, I like to put a couple of screws in there just to, just to hold it in. A little bit of security. And again, the screws aren't going to hold it together, but they will. If you can keep this whole thing from loosening up, it's just a just a better system. So what I do is I'm just uh, just going to drill just drill a couple of holes in here through the PVC, and then just drive a couple of. Uh, pan head sheet metal screws in here. And again, that, you want to use a, make sure you use a screw in there that's got a round head on it so it doesn't, if your hand should hit it, and you wouldn't want to use a hex screw or something like that in there because that might, uh, might cut your hand. So again, just uh, Alright, so what we're going to do is come back in a few minutes after this glue sets. We're just going to true up this surface and then uh, it'll be ready to use. Uh, there is one more step that we'll do also later. We, we do have to drill a hole through the middle of it in order to get the vacuum into the chuck. But uh, we need to let that epoxy sit up for a little while before we come back. So the glue set up on this, uh, the homemade vacuum chuck here that we made. Again, 4 inch PVC coupling uh, and, and PVC pipe in here. Uh, so as you can see that there is a slight taper on the on the coupling so you don't get a smooth surface right off the bat with the with the pipe so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to turn this and the other thing you find um, a lot of times that that you know these aren't perfectly round because it's it's pvc pipe and it doesn't really matter or they're not concentric uh is more often the case they may be round but they're not not centered um, so it's important to have a square edge on here to start with but even with that, sometimes you still have to um, work on getting this round. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this round. I'm going to take a little bit off this top surface here to get. And um, you can manipulate this any way you want. As we said earlier, if you're doing something like a small vase that's going to fit in here, you may want to taper on the inside. If you're doing something that's going to fit like a bowl that's going to come over the outside, I'm just going to put a rounded edge on here um, for now. And then um, I'll leave this so I can shape it as I need it in the future. So we'll go ahead and turn it. Uh, you can see that the coupling is actually more brittle than the pipe. Um, and I've got a little bit too aggressive in there, but I'm going to go ahead and, and take this and just round this edge over a little bit. And, uh, uh, but it's almost flat there. I've gotten rid of the, uh, the, the taper on the coupling. And uh, so I'll just take this one more time and just, just get that smooth out, round it out, and we'll call it good.
So that's what I did. It's got, I've, I've rounded the top and the bottom just a little bit, put a little bit of taper on it. Um, and as it with turning any plastic, uh, you need to use sharp tools and you need to give it time to cut. Um, and what I did when that chipped out at the beginning, it was just I was a little bit too, pushed it a little bit too hard, did not give the plastic enough time to cut. And particularly with a brittle plastic, it'll just, uh, um, it, it, it will, um, it'll chip out on you. So um, after that now, I would just take, and I'm not going to do this now because I'm going to leave this to shape uh, and, and some other application, but I would just take this peel and stick, and again, it's just a peel and stick piece of foam, put that on there, and uh, I'll do that whatever, you know, use it however I need it to be. So anyway, uh, cheap homemade vacuum chuck. Um, it's uh, the coupling is two dollars and fifty cents and a two foot piece of pipe was six dollars. Uh, probably have the block of wood uh, in your shop so for about ten dollars you can uh, you can do this if you're going to leave a face plate on it um, or you'll have to pay for that but if you thread it which is a, actually a pretty good way of doing it using the beel tap uh, based on your lathe um, you can do it that way as well. It works very well. Uh, there is one last step on here, which um, I don't I don't need to show you, but you do have to you do have to drill a hole through the middle of this um, wood block in order to get the um, just to get the vacuum through it. So that's the last step. Um, so that's uh, that's how to make your homemade homemade chuck. All right, so we've gone through the pretty much the whole system now, the parts, the components, the pumps, the chucks. So just like now to, to close by just showing you how I go through the process of, of using the vacuum chucks on the system. Um, right now I'm not going to use it, there's no vacuum applied to this, so I'm just going to use it as a as a, a jam chuck to kind of hold this while I, this is a rough turn bowl. Um, it's got a small tenon on it and I'm just going to true up this tenon and, uh, and get this ready to finish turning the inside. I'll eventually be mounting this on a chuck to turn it around and, and finish the inside. So. Um, I just find that these uh, the, the vacuum chucks are just a convenient way to hold um, a, a, a rough turn piece back on it because it, it's got that um, the rubber surface on it gives it a pretty good grip. Um, it's important that when you rough turn your pieces that you leave a center point on there so you can come back and, and recenter them. Um, if you don't, you can uh, if you forget to do that, you can always come back and. Um, uh, just just estimate it or or try to put a gauge on it, but you can see this is a this is a quite oval at this point. So um, just going to take this, line it up with the center point on my tailstock, bring it up against the chuck, and then just apply some pressure. And I always lock my tailstock in at that point because the only thing that's holding this on at this point is the pressure of the tailstock on there. And if you should have your hand wheel in a in a position where it could the weight of just the handle could um, the vibration could make it loosen and uh, and it, the bolt can uh, come flying off. So so the, what I'm going to do now here is um, I'm going to true up the tenon and just give the outside just a real quick shake. So that would need a little bit more work. I'm not going to spend the time on it here to do that, but the uh, the purpose is really is to get this tenon to give it a means to get this tenon shaped, so you can now put it in a chuck, turn it around, finish. Obviously, I finished cleaning up the outside, um, but put it in here, turn it around, and, and finish up the inside. All right, so 
taken this, we've so we've taken this off the chuck. We've had the inside completely done, the outside done, and through the magic of television, uh, we're going to end up with something like this. Um, and so now we're going to use the vacuum chuck to finish this foot. So uh, got a center point marked on here, uh, and I'm just going to line that up with the tailstock. Slide it up against the vacuum chuck, um, and I, I like to go through, give it a spin, make sure it's centered. Uh, if not, adjust it as necessary. Again, put a little bit of pressure from the tailstock on. Um, I have the adapter for the vacuum uh, uh, system into the hand wheel, and I will then take this uh, connect it to the vacuum pump. Um, and before I turn it on, I'm just going to make sure that, um, again, I, at some point I'm going to take this tailstock off, so the vacuum chuck is going to be holding this uh, on its own. So I want to make sure that everything is aligned, it's spinning freely, um, and I'll turn on the pump and make sure that uh, on my vacuum gauge that I do have sufficient vacuum. And um, the other thing to, to be aware of is as you cut this with your with your gouge, you want to make sure that um, um, that you, you take small cuts. Again, it's being held on by a vacuum, that the, the cuts are um, small, and you want as much as possible for the cuts to be into the wood rather than lateral, or into the bottom of the bowl rather than lateral. So uh, with that, let's give this a shot. Um, I'll turn the vacuum pump off just so you can hear me. But um, I've, I've made the I've smoothed out the transition from the uh, chuck. I would probably, depending upon the thickness I had, you know, make that a little bit deeper in there to, to, to smooth out. Um, and then I, you saw I saw I just did a shear scrape. No matter how well you try to get this centered, it's never exactly right. So when you do your foot, you need to just try to leave yourself enough room. But I just did that small shear scrape to bring that um, that that the edge of this foot back into the sides of the ball. And that, um, just that, that little transition, it just smoothed it right out. And then I would obviously just take sandpaper and finish sanding this and, and do it. Um, so a couple other things I just want to mention in here um, that you can do very often. After I, um, I often use seal cell oil finish on my pieces um, and I'll, I'll just give them a, a coat of seal cell, let them set up, and uh, after their, after their, um, the seal cell's on there, um, I often will come back and give it a, a, just a very fine sanding, usually with a, 
with a white scotch bright pad or with 600 sandpaper just to take just to smooth out the the nibs or anything that the that engrain did and the way i do that is i just come back to the vacuum chuck um, and all i do is i just spin it and i just do this by eye and i just hold it and uh until it gets because I don't, I no longer have a center point on there, so I'll just 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 center this by eye on here, and then turn on the vacuum. And, and it's very well, so you can see it's it's certainly well centered enough at this point to come in and to take my uh, my Scotch Bright pads or whatever I want to do. If there's a piece I need to work on there, I can just take it. But but um, and I just do this at very slow speed. But you can see how well I that is centered. Just 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 do it by eye, holding it on there before I do it. Um, and then off, and I will just take this and do the same thing. Just come back here, turn it around this way. Um, things that I have used this for. Um, I recently did a set of coasters uh, for a gift and I had a whole bunch of them. Um, I've used this, this, just a flat chuck like this. I had a piece of foam on it and um, you can see that this one has the threads on it and I just had this threaded on. I used a vacuum chuck that held them on there. I had a center point on it and it just gave me, uh, because they were so thin, I didn't want to use something like this because I was worried that it would uh, it would distort it as uh, it sucked it in. So I had a, a flat surface here uh, with a foam pad and just slightly convex or concave to give it some surface area to grip to. And it just, I didn't need much. I just needed it to, to finish the, the bottom, just get it flat. And, uh, and that worked fine. I've also used something like this for pendants. Um, again, just, just, so this is a piece that I've used. It started out thicker, but I've used it for several, um, uh, odd things that I want to do but if it's an odd piece that I want to apply vacuum to I just I just modify the shape of this stick a piece of foam on it and uh, um, and I can use it as a vacuum chuck so um, I hope this was helpful uh, so all the ways or many of the ways that I use a vacuum chuck as I said in the beginning uh, I find this an indispensable part of my uh, turning equipment I use it uh, I have it set up it's convenient to use and I use it all the time, um, it, whether it's for finishing or for uh, just finishing bottoms of bowls um, or for, um, as I showed, when I turn pieces that have no other way of, of even holding them, um, this works very well. Uh, the one time it doesn't, if you have uh, some really, really porous, punky wood, you just have to make sure you have a pump that's big enough to apply enough vacuum to get it on there. And um, you just need to be careful when you do it, realizing that that it is a, a vacuum uh, that's holding it on there. There's no other mechanical means. So you want to make sure that you are gentle with your cuts and, uh, and you're certainly standing out of the, the line of fire as you have the pieces coming around. All right, with that, we'll conclude this. Thank you very much.